All right, guys, it is Ash here, and I am joined today, very happy to be joined, with Chris, who is the product owner of the new Transformers game, Transformers Earth Wars. Chris, thanks so much for coming on. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for having me, Ash. Yeah, I, I'm going to start with a little disclaimer, and I asked you to come on. You're obviously uh, Transformers Earth Wars is a, the newest game by Space Ape, and I reached out to you guys because I previously did this with another game, Gods of Olympus, and I had such a fun time talking to one of the developers on that team, so I thought I'd bring you on the channel and uh, kind of have another conversation. It's uh, it's It looks like a fun game. Uh, you know, to be purely honest, I just picked it up a couple days ago, so I'm far from an expert, but... I'm hoping that you can kind of shed some light into the game and how it came to be. Yeah, sure. So um, I guess like I, I was working um, at Space Ape. I've been here for about three years and I was working on a title called uh, Samurai Siege for the, yeah. for the first year or so. Very familiar. Um, and then just, just over like a couple of years ago, um, we were approached by uh, Hasbro and Backflip and they'd seen Samurai Siege and they were aware of Rival Kingdoms, uh, one of our other titles that was coming out. And they asked us whether we'd be interested in making a Transformers game. And uh, so when I first got wind of this, I was really, really excited because I've always been a long-term Transformers fan anyway. Nice. Um, so I, I really jumped at the opportunity to make a Transformers game and, um, you know, we started at that point talking about what we could do, what we could include, and started putting together some initial plans for, for what the game could be. Um, and yeah, here we are today. V very cool. Uh, why don't we rewind just a little bit and tell me a little bit about your history. Like, what's your gaming background and what led you to initially become a developer at Space Ape? Yeah, so, well, I think like a lot of people, I, I grew up with games, and the games I grew up with were uh, loaded off cassette tape in the 1980s, and they were pretty crude affairs, but yeah. they were also, also great fun and with a big focus on gameplay as well. Yeah. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, a lot of the old arcade games of the 1980s, some of the early Sega stuff, uh, the Taito games like Bubble Bobble, all of the, nice. all of the classics, really. And so... You know, as I got a bit older, um, I, I got into development um, and, you know, I, I, I kind of joined mobile, I suppose, in 2001, 2002, back when the phones were very crude black and white phones. And mm -hmm. in some ways, the games we were making were technically quite similar to the ones I was playing back when I was a kid. So um, the mobile industry, obviously, since then has just come on leaps and bounds and the launch of the um, App Store and the the iPhone was a real step forward in terms of the games we could deliver, both in terms of quality and it, get, getting them into as many players' hands as possible. So within the last 15 years, really, um, I've gone from working with crude two-color games with leapy sound to uh, games that are almost at console quality um, with really fantastic, um, talented teams working working yeah. to deliver the products you see. So um, a big transformation in the last 15 years. Yeah, no pun intended, right? Hey, you guys <laughs> started out with uh, started out with Snake and then moved to Transformers Earth Wars. So I'd say it's a it's a pretty good leap there. <laughs> yeah, that's it, and uh, it's really cool, you know, to be able to travel around and see people playing games that you made when you're on public transport or on the move and out and about. It's it's really awesome. Oh, it's yeah, just a really it, cool it, it, must be, it must be very very cool job. I'm sure it's a lot of people out there listening's dream job uh, in a lot of ways. So. So uh, congrats to you. It's funny you mentioned Bubble Bobble because I remember as a kid growing up just uh, going to like friends' house sleepovers and that game never ended. I remember being at like level 90 and uh, and still not going to sleep playing that game. It was uh, a lot of fun uh, in the retro gaming world. Uh, yeah, I've, st I've still not got to the end of that game now. <laughs> I've, put, I've plowed a lot of time into it. Uh, the thing you always forget when you go back to some of those early games is quite how difficult they are. Yes, and that's what I liked about uh, some of them. But, yeah, uh, yeah, they were tough games. Yeah, I love the tough games. Uh, one of my favorites was Ghost and Goblins. Uh, it was like a NES retro uh, game, and it was very, very difficult. And I you lost your uh, you lost your armor on that game. As yes, well. yes, you, uh, yes. Hit, got hit, and then you ran around naked. Exactly. So only had that was two an lives. Interesting yeah. early innovation in gaming, I think. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Yeah, it was a very, very interesting title if people want to go check it out on their emulators or whatever they're playing nowadays. But to get back on topic a little bit, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about Transformers, because that's the reason I asked you on here. Uh, tell us about Transformers uh, from the perspective of a brand new player just picking up the game. Like, sure. what is the game? Uh, is it What is it similar to and what is it not similar to? 
Sure. So Transformers is, is a game really in the build and battle genre. So um, there will be similarities to a, with a game like uh, Samurai Siege. There will be similarities to uh, Clash of Clans. But where the game really differs is with those games, there's probably the, the primary focus is just building your base and on your environment. Whereas in Transformers, tra it's really all about the characters and it's about building your collection of bots up. So the first thing you'll see in the game is the opportunity to choose between Autobots and Decepticon, which is a pretty big choice in itself. Um, and very few Transformers games in the past have ever given you the chance to play as the Decepticons. So if you want to be a bad guy, you can actually live out your wild dreams in this game and uh, uh, be Megatron. Um, for, from that point onwards, really, you're building up your team of Transformers. And what we really wanted to do with this game, beyond any other Transformer game, was really make sure that we got the characters spot on. So Transformers has got a fantastic history stretching back to 1984, and that sort of encompasses loads of comic books. It encompasses the original cartoon, the animated movie, and then through to its more modern guises today. And we wanted to make sure that when we introduced a character in this game, that people who were long-standing Transformers fans really recognised the character and recognised their behaviour, not only from storyline perspective, but also from a playability uh, angle as well. So, for example, if you unlock someone like Ratchet, uh, who's a medic, his function in the game would be to heal the other characters. Similarly, a character like Optimus Prime, the leader, he should inspire the other characters and be able to direct them in battle. And we wanted those gameplay changes to be consistent across every character we introduced. And, you know, we've got at launch uh, approaching 60 different playable characters in the game. Wow. Across both factions. There's a, there's a lot of Transformers in this game. And, you know, our our goal is to, is to get a lot more. Um, my, my personal goal, I guess, is to, to have the Transformers game with the most Transformers characters in it. Um, so we're aiming, you know, lots of cool expansions in the future to the to the number of characters in the game. Very cool. So the last time I picked up Samurai Siege, which was admittedly probably over a year ago now, although I did play it for a while when it came out, uh, the last time I picked it up, there were no, uh, you know, characters like that. There was no, what what is it, hero type god like characters that you could, you know, upgrade and whatnot outside the game you just had troops that you used in the individual battle are there still yeah. troops like that in transformers or is it just your transformers your bots no, yeah not really i mean something we deliberately did early in development like i didn't want your experience to be you start the game and we've given you a selection of clone cloned bots that you don't really recognize and they're, they're a little bit meaningless in terms of the world of Transformers. I wanted, wanted you to start the game with a character you know and love, and you're working towards getting Optimus and some of the key characters, and I wanted them all to play distinctive roles. So the early prototyping we did in development was really like, how can we take a game like Samurai Siege and make battles work with just you know four to eight characters running around um, on, on, on the battlefield as opposed to up to 200 and that was a big change in itself but by reducing the number of characters that were running around on the battlefield um, we could do a lot of other cool things like we could give you slightly more control over those characters so whereas in Samurai Siege you kind of choose where you're deploying them and uh, then off they go and do their thing with Transformers we were able then to introduce the the, uh, the ability to use the characters in different ways. So you could, say, target uh, a plane of a particular building. Um, you could target a warrior to ram through walls, hit a particular defense, and it gave you a bit more control. This also brought out the personality of the characters in themselves. So we could actually make use of transformation in battle as a result of doing this. Yeah, that's, that's very cool. It's one of the things that I've seen, you know, after, like I said, only been playing a few days, so I don't have a lot to sh to, uh, of light to shed in the conversation, but it is a different uh, a different way of going about this, you know, the Empire building games, and it, it's, it feels a little bit new and fresh and from that regard. Uh, I, what about someone like me? I'm probably one of the only people on Earth, so there might not be a lot of others out there, but for whatever reason, back in 84 to 87 when the first cartoon was on, I guess I was more of a He-Man and Thundercats guy, so I don't have a lot of Transformers knowledge. Am I going to be at a disadvantage picking up the game, or uh, will I pick on pretty, or catch on pretty fast? You'll catch on fast. I mean, we've done, we've made a lot of nods to, to things within the Transformer universe within the game. So if you are a long-standing fan, you'll see things. But if you don't know much about Transformers, if maybe the only thing you've seen 
is one of the more recent Michael Bay films, for example, um, you'll easily be able to pick up and play this game and also learn something about the characters in the process. We've tried to take what was fun. So, for example, some of the spirit of the G1 cartoons um, from, from the 80s, you know, the humour. Um, yeah. But bring it to date, like, this is ultimately, it's not a retro product. It's not, you're not going to play it and feel like, you know, this is a game that came out 30 years ago. The cars are all modern and it feels fresh. The graphics are all up to date. And um, really, this is like Transformers for a modern audience with a nod to its history, as it were. So, okay. uh, yeah. But if, if, you were a, if you were a child of the 80s and you enjoyed Thundercats and or, all the other cartoons around at the time, then, then yeah, you'll, you'll definitely enjoy this game. But, yeah, I wouldn't say you need a, a big knowledge of Transformers to play it, but it might help you, I guess, pick between Autobots and Decepticons if you already have a preference as to what your uh, favourite characters are. Yeah, do you have a preference? Or yes. do, you think, do you think one might be stronger right now? They can give people a little tip. <laughs> well, we, we do, it's an interesting point. We're doing a lot to make sure that, you know, the Autobots and Decepticons are equally balanced. So there is no negative, um, there is no real negative uh, choice that you can make. Um, however, I would say, like, in terms of Transforms itself, Autobots have way more characters than the Decepticons within the universe, but not the game. And this is largely a result of, uh, you know, ultimately kids prefer buying good good guys rather than bad guys when it comes to toys. So Transforms has always, always reflected that. But I think the Decepticons, despite not having as many characters, have the coolest characters. They've got some really distinctive looking bots, like examples being you've got a character like shockwave who's kind of like looks like a purple cyclops style robot you've got bludgeon who transforms into a samurai and then he's a tank um you've got some of the real personalities like starscream who's always trying to uh plot against megatron you've got soundwave who's sort of like got his very distinctive voice and the ability to uh um, so kind of eject tapes basically as they were back in the day they're discs now in the, in the current iteration of Transformers to help him in battle and we've replicated a lot of that in the game as well very very cool it sounds uh, it sounds pretty cool it sounds pretty involved do you have a favorite uh, do you have a favorite character um, I always say Bludgeon was one of my favorites mainly because I worked on Samurai Siege before so ah. there's a nice link between the two games there um, but I think in terms of sort of uh, I mean you know back Back when I was a kid, Optimus Prime was uh, obviously the, the guy I really rooted for because he was the good guy, and uh, I was I was devastated in in the original Transformers movie where he he died. Spoiler, but yeah. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> the last yeah. first years, yeah. It's uh, he he was the guy I liked back in the day, but um, Very yeah. Cool. Very cool. Well, you mentioned a little bit about uh, Samurai Siege. Obviously, that's where your history with Space Ape uh, originated. Uh, I do have a question about my own, uh, I guess, play history with with Space Ape games. And uh, I started with Samurai Siege, and then I played Rival Kingdoms. Was really into both games for a few month period uh, on both games. I think Rival Kingdoms. I got to Stronghold 15. Samurai Siege. I forgot. It's been a while how far I got, but it was pretty. We were in top alliances and kingdoms in both games, respectively. I guess my question to you is: part of the reason that I left both games is because I really did feel like the events there were a little bit overwhelming in terms of, especially with Rival Kingdoms, I kind of dipped out of Samurai Siege at the beginning of the event cycle when it was being brought to the game. But especially Rival Kingdoms, to me, it felt like every single weekend or every other weekend there were, you know, these hardcore events where I had to get 100 or 200 attacks in in hopes of winning a prize that would benefit me going forward in the game. And... In order to do that, I had to spend money, so there was no option for me to play, you know, just uh, and compete at the highest level without doing so. Is there any, do you have any lessons or, or even just feedback that you picked up from the other two games in regards to events that you're bringing to Transformers? Yeah, sure. I mean, for us, we're looking to run events in Transformers and we'll do different types of events. So there will be some that are a lot more casual and uh just sort of like, uh, they're, you know, very easy to opt in and out of. And there'll be some that are, are, are more, uh, you know, you have to fight harder for. I think the two things we've done, firstly, like with the standard Alliance War in um, in Transformers Earth Wars, we made that much more casual than Samurai Siege. Uh, the, how we did that was by giving you only five battles that you have to fight. Whereas in, say, Samurai Siege, there was an infinite number. Um, and in uh, Rival Kingdoms, there was quite a large number as well. Um, similarly with events, we're looking to um, start by introducing individual events. So 
you don't need to necessarily team up with your alliance. You can just um, play um, on, at your own terms. And uh, we, we're introducing an interesting uh, feature with our events that hasn't been in any of the other two games called Prestige. And what this means is it's... Whereas in, say, Samurai Siege or Rival Kingdoms, it was relatively difficult to progress through the event and get to the top prize, um, we're making it slightly easier in, in Transformers Earth Wars, but you'll actually be able to enter the event multiple times and increase your prestige level. So if you're a really dedicated player and, and you want to get tons and tons of prizes, you can just go through the event lots of times. But if you are if you just want to put, put in like 10 minutes, 20 minutes, then you can do that as well. So we are trying to cater as best as we can for both types of players, whether you're someone who wants to spend hours on the game, which is really cool. Thank you very much if you do. Or if you just want to dip in and out for five or 10 minutes. Okay, yeah, that sounds like a pretty happy medium because, again, you know, I just can't stress enough. That was, for me, I love the concept of both of the other games, but it was just a, and it wasn't, I'm a, I consider myself a very competitive player. It was just, I guess, the, I don't know, it, you know, I guess the, it wasn't even so much the grind, but just the fact that it was, like I said, an advantage that you would take throughout the entire history of the game. If you didn't compete, you'd kind of miss out on it. A and B, the fact that, you know, there was no other way than just grinding out, you know, hundreds of attacks. Uh, and in order to do so, obviously, you had to you had to spend money. So it just felt like to me a little bit too much of, uh, you know, of those uh, too much stress put on those one events. Now, I, I do like the idea of making the, you know, the re opt in idea. That way people can still get a reward, it sounds like, just by entering in one time for, you know, 15, 20 minutes or even a few times, but they don't necessarily have to grind out all, all day long on the weekends or whatever. Yeah, I think, I think we're still planning a lot, a lot of our events with uh, Transformers Earth Wars and they're coming soon. Um, so we're still putting the final touches to them. So I don't uh, overly promise anything, but I think part of what you're talking about as well is the fact that in the early days of Samurai Sea, especially if you missed a particular event there was often no other way to get the prizes from that event so yeah. you know everyone's got lives outside playing games and maybe, maybe you just can make the event and then you you feel disappointed so we're looking into ways to which means that you you might be able to get those prizes that are in an event if you miss the event in the future or if you just start playing the game a month or two in after the events have taken place Excellent. Uh, well, looking forward to seeing what those events do hold in the game, because I do like events as a general concept. I just think that a little bit refining maybe for the uh, for the entire audience would be great. But uh, moving on, uh, before I let you go, could you just maybe give some beginner tips? Because I imagine most people who are, are listening to this video or watching this video are probably picking up the game for the first time. So uh, how about some beginner tips for people? Like what should they focus on right off the bat and what would you advise them to uh, do as far as as far as after they picked their their faction yeah so after you've picked your faction i think the most important thing is like make some progress through the first campaign and you'll get to a particular point um where you can uh build a scanner and then you can find other opponents and by doing that it's a nice easy way of finding some easy opponents and leveling up your team of bots. And by leveling them up, you'll also make the campaign easier. You'll also be given a bunch of cyber coins uh, when you start the game. Um, if it was me, I would probably go and spend these on uh, bots within the space bridge, because then you'll make your team stronger and it will make you more competitive within the game. So yeah, that'd be my tips. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Chris. I really appreciate you coming on. Again, Chris is the product owner of Transformers Earth Wars, which is the new game, kind of, I guess, a collaboration between Space Ape and Hasbro, or is it just basically Space Ape and with Hasbro's blessing? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, so Space Ape is the developer of the title, and uh, we're publishing through Backflip. Excellent, um, excellent. Okay. Yeah. Well, Chris, yeah. thank you so much. Uh, it's a great game. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what type of future it has. Uh, very optimistic about it. Yeah, thanks very much for taking the time uh, to chat with us today and hope you enjoy playing the game. Ah, me too, man. Looking forward to it. Take care. Cheers. Yeah, take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.